So on this Shabbat, we read two Torah portions, a double Torah portion, Matot Ma'aseh, Matot Ma'aseh, which are the end of the book of Numbers. And this is sort of a Jewish way, the Torah's way of warning us in many regards that the high holy days are now approaching, believe it or not. We know this for two reasons. Number one, I think for clergy at least, the beginning of Deuteronomy, which is next week, just sort of triggers that feeling of awe, if you will, uh, that it's coming. But also because we're in the cycle of Haftorah readings, Haftorah being the additional readings um, from the prophets, of what are called the three of rebuke and the seven of comfort. There are three Haftorah portions, portions from the prophets, read in the days Shabbatot leading up to um, Tisha B'Av, which is next weekend after Shabbat. So there are three of those where the prophets in any given uh, Haftorah are doing this, warning the people of their demise, uh, imminent demise, at their own hands, of course, uh, for their sins. And then after Tisha B'Av, so not next Shabbat, but the following, there are seven of comfort, seven Haftorahs where the prophet, typically Isaiah in those cases, are saying, uh, is saying something of comfort to the people. You'll go back to the land, all will be forgiven, that kind of thing. So the three of rebuke, the seven of comfort, total, anyone? Ten. I was not good at word problems, but I... Uh, and so we are nine weeks away from, nine Shabbatot away, from Rosh Hashanah. Yay! So you know, what I thought we would do tonight is um, talk a little bit about uh, Nedarim, about vows. No, we're not going to do that, actually, because Cantor Edinger is going to do that tomorrow morning. He's going to talk about vows, as in Kol Nidre. As in the Talmud, the tractate Nidari, there's an entire tractate of Talmud just about vows. We are going to talk about, however, a very pragmatic idea that the Torah uh, suggests, which is the building of cities of refuge. Can anyone describe in just a few sentences what we know from the Torah? A city of refuge is meant to do. Why a city of refuge, for example, is to be built? Anyone know? <coughs> the city of refuge. Can I borrow your thing? Doesn't pick it up. Thank you. Was that Mackenzie? Projection. Was that? Oh, that was yours. Yes, he likes to he likes to talk during the drosh. Does anyone know what a city of refuge was? City of refuge, Dr. Cohen. <laughs> A place for an inadvertent murderer to reside. Okay, so if I... Thank you. If I schmice someone by mistake, that is called in legalese, anyone? Manslaughter? If I kill someone by mistake, now I'm not taught, I really killed them by mistake. I was out in the farm, and I was with my uh, farming equipment tools, and... Oh, no, this could have happened. And I go to do something, and I hit someone with the very irony, heavy metal, and boom, right in that, out they go. I schmice them. That's what schmicing is. I'm, I killed them by mistake. So a city of refuge was built for that person to reside. Now, why do you think, just from your own logic, your own, um, you know, you have rational minds, why do you think a person needed to go to a city of refuge in that case? Uh, uh, someone who commit yes, why, Ronan? Why? <laughs> Do you want to tell everyone? Why, Pumpkin? Yes, why, Marty? Huh? To avoid revenge of who? Relatives, friends, that guy, that Schmendrick, he schmiced my husband. I'm gonna kill him! Revenge. It's a very age old classic. Thing, I guess. Very pragmatic, though, that God instructs Moses to instruct uh, the people to build and, and uh, these cities of refuge. How many? Do you know how many were built? There were six total that were built. Three on the Jordan side, three on the Canaan side. Now, why is this pragmatic? 
Why is this such a pragmatic thing to do? What does this teach us about human nature? Those of us who are all so calm and peaceful. Yes, Chloe. There are going to be people who do bad. There are going to be people who do bad. There is good in people who do bad. And the converse, there is bad in people. I mean, we didn't even plan this, Chloe, but we are in sync. <laughs> we have two inclinations within us. Inclinations meaning um, uh, the things that make our blood flow in good ways and in, in destructive ways. The things that make us passionate one way or another. The things that lead us to act certain ways. And one is called the Yetzer Hara the inclination to do bad. And the other is called, anyone? Yetzer Ha Hatov, the good inclination. So we've got, now some people would call it better angels, some people would call it, um, um, you know, people who have bad tempers and people who have good tempers. But this isn't about temperament. This is about Ra, bad, evil, and the inclination, as Chloe pointed out, that there is good in us that sometimes people do bad things, but they're still good people, right? And often we give people a pass or an excuse by saying, yes, they did this bad thing, but they're good people. On the other hand, there are people who are really bad, who are incapable of being good or doing good. Now, in Judaism, we are supposed to balance the two. But in order to balance the two, the Yetzer Hara, the inclination to do evil, and the Yetzer Tov, the inclination to do bad, in order to find a balance, we have to do something that most of us, including yours truly, are reluctant to do. And what is that? What are we reluctant to do when it comes to bad and evil ways? Forgive. forgive. We're not there yet. No, we're not there yet because sometimes we can't forgive. Sometimes we can't or we feel like we can't. We admit not only that you made a mistake, but even go further. Go further. Go further. Forget about atonement. We have 10 weeks for that. <laughs> but we're building up to it. You have to admit that you have evil inside of you. That you have a dark side. Now, I don't know about you, but I am reluctant to admit even that there is darkness inside of me, right? And I don't want anyone in this room thinking, oh, you're such a great guy, Rabbi Khan. That's not possible. <laughs> we all think that. I know, that's why, <laughs> that's why I said it with a little bit of sarcasm, <laughs> right? And I'm not talking about the desire, the inclination to not talk nice to someone. I'm talking about the deep stuff, Randy the inclination to actually kill someone is in you too. The Torah is pragmatic, therefore. The Torah accepts. It's called like your shadow, right? It's, it's, these are all ideas that are floating in my head for the High Holy Days because I'm fascinated by evil. I really am. Not just because it exists and we all know it exists, but I want to know what the root cause of evil is. And I've been thinking about this forever not forever. I wrote my rabbinic thesis on the story of Cain and Abel. And one of the things I was, this is why in my rabbinate, I've been very fascinated with this because I always wanted to know what was that moment, that thing that made Cain get so mad that he ends up killing his brother? What is that rage that he, that he had that made him do it? And one of the things that we learn in studying stories like Cain and Abel is that each one of us has that same... If, if Cain, one of the two firstborn people outside of Eden, has that kind of evil, that kind of darkness inside of him where he's capable, even though God says, Cain, if I were you, I wouldn't do it, kind of says that, um, then we have it. If Cain had it, we have it, because we're all descendants. On this Shabbat, I want you to think about not that you're evil, that's not the message here. I don't want you all going home and thinking I'm evil. But I want you, going back to this pragmatic Torah portion, I want, or this idea of the cities of refuge, you could be the nicest person in the world. You could give tzedakah, and you could clean up your room, and brush your teeth when you're told to, 
Never. Well, I can brush my teeth. You can brush your teeth. You're not cleaning your room? You see, she's pretty adamant about that. Um, and honest. But like... Yeah, what all over the floor? Legos. Legos, yeah. Are you obsessed with the Legos? No, we're getting rid of it. We're getting rid of it? But you have to clean it up in order to get rid of it, yes? Anyway, back to what I was saying. Actually, Legos are a nice symbol of messiness, yes? That we can turn into something that's creative and beautiful. My point is that the Torah understands that you could be the nicest person who cleans up your Legos and brushes your teeth and does everything that your parents says to do, that you keep the rules and follow by them and all that good stuff, but you are still capable of killing someone. You have a darkness inside of you, a dark place. And so therefore, we want to protect those who, in this case, inadvertently murdered someone, inadvertently killed someone, from others who otherwise wouldn't do such a thing, but because it's personal, right? Their loved one was inadvertently killed, may want to seek revenge. Revenge is about passion. Revenge is typically a crime of passion, or can be at least. But going back to what we're talking about with the AIDS or hurrah, before we can repent, before we can get to forgiveness, before we can get to formulating our apologies and being accountable, we have to acknowledge and accept that there is darkness inside each one of us. And I think the Torah in this week's Parsha is making that very clear to us. That even those who have inadvertently killed someone need protection because it is indeed human nature, going back to Cain again, that we have that darkness inside of us. On this Shabbat, I want you to just explore that within yourself, with others, what is that dark place inside of me? What, is that, what does that look like? What does it feel like? And as God says to Cain, to you, to you Cain, will be the urge to go there, to enter the darkness. Don't do it. How do we help ourselves prevent ourselves from going there, to, from engaging in it? This isn't a dark of our Torah. If you, if you leave here and you say, that was kind of dark, I wasn't expecting that, then you're not getting it. And I don't mean that to be judgmental, I mean that, that we need to talk. And I need to study and you need to study because evil exists in all of us. But the good news is, the Yetzer Tov does as well. The inclination to do good, which I believe is the godliness inside of us, that exists as well. And we can overcome the darkness, but we have to admit and acknowledge that it's there to begin with. Let's think about this, the Shabbat. Shabbat Shalom.